Sutta said, After hearing the words of Prajapati Brahma, Narada became delighted in his mind and spoke these words. Narada said, O Brahma, O great disciple of Vishnu, endowed with great intellect, you are a blessed devotee of Shiva and a guide to the understanding of the great principle. You have narrated the divine story of Arundhati and her previous form as Sandhya. It increases our devotion to Shiva. Now, O knower of virtue, please tell me the excellent story of Shiva that quells all sins and is very excellent bestower of all auspicious benefits. When Kama was delighted after taking a wife to himself, when Sandhya had gone to perform penance, and when others had also left, what happened? Sutta said, On hearing the words of that sage of magnanimous soul, Brahma became more pleased and spoke as follows. O great Brahmana, Narada, listen with devotion to the auspicious story of Shiva's divine sports. You are a blessed devotee of Shiva. O oh, dear one, since I vanished from that place highly distressed by the poisonous words of Shiva, I had been thinking about that alone, since I had been in delusion still. After thinking about it for a long time, I began to nurse malicious grudge against Shiva, here again being deluded by Shiva's maya. I shall explain it to you. Listen. Then I went to the place where Daksha and others were present. On seeing Kama in the company of Rati, I was a little elated. O oh Narada, addressing Daksha and the other sons, I spoke these words, deluded by Shiva's illusion. O oh Daksha, O oh Marichi and others, my sons, listen to my words. After hearing, you shall all find out a remedy for dispelling my distress. Taking into consideration the only fact of harboring a desire for woman, Shiva despised me and you. It is because he is a great yogin that he reproached us so much. Hence, I am greatly distressed and I do not get mental peace at all. Such an effort must definitely be made as would make him take a wife unto himself. I shall become happy and be free from misery when he takes a wife unto himself. But on reflection, I feel that it is impossible to realize the accomplishment of this desire. Taking into consideration only the fact that I harbored a desire for woman, Shiva rebuked me in the presence of the sages. How will he then take a wife unto himself? Who can be that woman in the three worlds who will ever haunt his mind, make him neglect the path of yoga, and delude him? Even Kama will not be competent to delude him. He is a yogin of great perfection, and he does not brook even the name of women. Unless the primordial being Shiva indulges in sexual sport, the creation would continue to be mediocre, its course being unchecked, as the Lord himself has stated it. On the earth there may be great asuras bound by illusion. Some are bound by the illusion of Vishnu, and others by the illusion of Shiva. In regard to Shiva, who has turned away from the world and who is extremely detached, nothing else except the endeavor of Kama will be effective. There is no doubt about it. After saying this and casting meaningful glances at Daksha and other sons, I addressed Kama and Rati with great pleasure. O Kama, foremost among my sons, you are the bestower of happiness in every respect. Listen to my words with great attention in the company of your wife, O son of great filial affection. O Kama, you shine well with this life companion of yours. She too shines well with you as her husband. Just as Vishnu with Lakshmi and Lakshmi with Vishnu, just as the night with the moon and the moon with the night, 
so you two mutually illuminate each other and tend your matrimonial life. Hence, you will be the banner of the universe, nay, the banner of the whole cosmos. O oh, dear one, you shall enchant Shiva for the benefit of the universe, so that Shiva may be inclined to take a wife unto himself. In a secluded or in a crowded place, on mountains or in lakes, wherever Shiva goes, you shall follow him along with your mistress and charm him who has controlled himself and who is averse to women. Excepting you, there is no one able to delude him. O Kama, it is only when Shiva falls in love that you will get redemption from the curse. Hence, do what is good for you. Lord Shiva, as a noble being, shall save you only when he falls in love and aspires for a wife. Hence, with your wife to help you, strive to captivate Shiva. Earn the laurels of the universe after charming him. On hearing these words of mine, his father and the Lord of the universe, Kama spoke these words to me, the Lord of all the worlds. Kama said, O Lord, I shall cause the delusion of Shiva at your bidding, but my prime weapon is a woman. Hence, O Lord, you shall create a comely maiden. O Creator, also arrange for the way how Shiva has to be further enchanted after he has been deluded by me. Brahma said, When Kama put forward this suggestion, I, the Creator, and Prajapati Daksha considered the matter, by whom is he to be enamored? While I was agitated with this thought, I heaved a deep sigh from which Vasanta, spring, cropped up, fully bedecked with clusters of flowers. He was like a red lotus. His eyes resembled the full-blown lotus. His face shone like the full moon rising at dusk. His nose was well-shaped. His feet were arched like a bow. His hair was dark and curly. He was decorated with two earrings. He looked bright as the morning sun. His gait was majestic like that of an elephant in rut. His arms were long and stout. His shoulders were raised. His neck resembled the conch shell. His chest was very broad. His face was plump and finely shaped. He was comely in appearance, dark-complexioned, and endowed with all characteristic marks. He was very handsome to look at, capable of enchanting everyone and of heightening feelings of love. When Vasanta, the storehouse of flowers endowed with these features, was born, there blew a very fragrant wind. All the trees put forth blossoms. Hundreds of sweet-throated cuckoos cooed the note of Panchama sweetly. The clean and clear lakes abounded in full-blown lotuses. On seeing such an excellent being born thus, I, Brahma Hiranyagarbha, spoke these sweet words to Kama. O God of love, thus a constant companion for you has come to exist. He too resembles you. He will render favorable service unto you. Just as the wind, the friend of fire, helps it everywhere, so also this spring will always help you. Since he is the final cause for a permanent abode, after marriage, let him be known as Vasanta. His duty is to follow you and to delight all people. Let the Malay breeze, the elegance of your person, be your constant companion as he remains under your control. The feminine coquettish gestures like the affected indifference in amorous dalliance and the sixty-four fine arts shall be the friends of your wife Rati in the same manner as they are your friends. O Kama, in the company of Rati and these companions, Vasanta and others, you shall exert yourself in charming Lord Shiva. O oh, dear one, I shall conceive and create that lovely woman who will finally captivate him. When Kama was thus addressed by me, Brahma, 
He was delighted, and he fell at my feet along with his wife and offered obeisance. He bowed to Daksha and paid respect to my mental sons. He then went to the place where Shiva, the Supreme Soul, had gone.